Okay, I hope you have had a chance to solve this solution, uh, to come up with your own solution to this problem, and I'm gonna share mine. So this problem uh, is a two-dimensional array problem. So one of the first things we should do is we should make a for loop, which iterates through the rows. So it's gonna start at row zero and go as long as the row is less than the uh, length of the initial array and the row is going to increment and we're gonna do the same thing for uh, every row we're gonna iterate through the columns so we uh, grab a row from the initial array and we're gonna iterate through the columns up until the end of them um, at this point, we want to uh, compare how many bombs are next to it according to the left, top, right, and the diagonals. Uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, write that helper function called git cell. So this is the function which takes in an array and a row and a column. Uh, in fact, this function already has access to the minefield here, so I'm not gonna bother, oops. I'm not gonna bother passing the array into there. And what it's gonna do is it's going to uh, return, it's gonna do the boundary checking. So if the row is less than zero or the column is less than zero, it is going to return zero. If the row is greater than or equal to the minefield length, it is going to return zero. If the column is greater than or greater than or equal to the length of a specific row, it is going to return zero. Finally, um, we're going to say um, if the minefield at the row and the column is equal to a asterisk, we're going to return one. Otherwise, we're going to return zero. So what this function is doing, um, I've admitted a bunch of the curly braces uh, by putting the if and the returns on the same line. It just makes it a little bit more succinct. Um, it's doing the bounds checking, which really uh, is saying if there is not a val if you're not at a valid position, uh, we're going to return zero. And if you're at a valid position and that position has a asterisk, we're going to return one to indicate that there is one bomb at that location. If it was a valid position, but the thing at the minefield at that row and column was not a asterisk, we simply return zero. So this get cell function uh, does bounds checking and it uh, only will return one to indicate that there is one bomb at that location if you're at a valid position and there's actually a bomb there. So what we can do here is uh, we can say that the bombs for this location starts at zero. And we can say, um, well actually first let's let's see if um, let's see if there if, if if there is a bomb here. So maybe we could say if uh, get the cell 
at this row and this column, if that equals one, uh, it means there is a bomb here. And we can say that the line is equal to, we, we add an asterisk for that line. Um, I, I'm doing a, uh, for every single row, we're gonna build up a line which represents the string to print out. And we're gonna go through all the columns and build up this string for the line. And then we're gonna print it out at the end here. So if there's a bomb there, uh, we append an asterisk. Otherwise, we're gonna say the number of bombs uh, starts as zero and we can say bombs plus equals uh, get the number of bombs at uh, we need to iterate through every single uh, neighbor. So maybe let's start at uh, the top left. So it's gonna be row minus one, column plus one. Uh, we can get the one that's above it. We could say uh, the ones on the left and the right, that's gonna be at the row and the column to the left and the column to the right. Let's see. Top left, top, top right. This is the bottom left, the bottom, and the bottom right. And that's going to be uh, the row below it, the row below it, and the column. Um, I guess this is actually a column. Let's swap these. Let's look to the left first, and then we'll look to the right. So. Uh, now we can say the line is equal to uh, the number of bombs here. So this is actually um, this is actually enough here. Um, we are iterating through every every element of the two-dimensional array and from the perspective of every position of that array, we are looking at the top left, the top, the top right, and what's to the left of it, and what's to the right of it, and what's to the bottom left, the bottom, and the bottom right. So we're just checking top left, top, top right, left, right, bottom left, bottom, bottom right. And we're counting how many bombs appear in those locations. Uh, since we run it through the get cell function, uh, we can, it's either gonna report that uh, there was nothing there, um, or there was one bomb at that location. And since we have the bounds checking inside that function, we don't need to do any bounds checking inside here at all. So if we run this code, let's see, node, hmm. Uh, we did not actually call this function, so let's make sure we do that. Uh, minesweeper uh, with that minefield. I believe that's what we called it. And let's see what went wrong. Uh, in this case, we had a lot of... Well, this thing should have just returned zero. Hmm. Let's see, so it has a problem on line 25. And I did not call this function properly. Um, I used an array syntax on that. Sorry to anyone who's been looking at that for the past 10 minutes. Uh, but we should call this function uh, like that. My apologies. And there we go, it's actually uh, printing it out uh, correctly. So 
uh, that is how we can use our knowledge of two-dimensional arrays to start to produce some interesting effects here. Um, here we go. Let's compare that just to make sure it was what we expected. Star star 2-0, oh, star star 3-1, 2-3 three, one, three, star 1-0, one, 1-1-1. Oh, one, one, one. Fantastic. So um, I, I really do love data structures and algorithms. Um, even the two-dimensional uh, array uh, really allows you to do some, some interesting things. Um, I hope your solution, uh, I hope you got there, and uh, I hope you feel more comfortable with two-dimensional arrays now. Okay, uh, this challenge is to write a function uh, which interacts with a 2D array which looks like Minesweeper. Uh, if you've never played Minesweeper before, uh, the point of the game is to click on these boxes and determine where the bombs are. You want to click on the boxes uh, so long as you don't end up clicking on a box with a bomb, like here. Uh, in this example, uh, well, in Minesweeper, uh, all of the numbers represent how many bombs are next to that number. So uh, this number one means that there is one bomb next to this number. Uh, this game is actually uh, not finished being played. Uh, these are unplayed squares. Uh, the user should actually click on each of those. Uh, each of these would all be a one as well um, because there's exactly one bomb right there. Uh, you can see over here uh, the number two uh, means that this cell is next to two bombs. Uh, similarly, this number two is next to two bombs. Nothing else around it is a bomb, and it doesn't count what's off the edge. And this one is a three because it is next to one, two, three bombs. So if you look everywhere, every single number is representing exactly how many bombs are next to it. Uh, so here you can see that there's a two and since we already have found out that there's one bomb here um, that means that this must be a bomb and if that's a bomb then this two since we already know there's a bomb here uh, that means that there must be a bomb here and this one must be safe because uh, the two is already touching two bombs and the three is already touching three bombs um, so that's the general idea of Minesweeper. Uh, we're not asking you to, we're not challenging you to uh, recreate Minesweeper. Uh, instead, uh, what we want to do is write a program that accepts a minefield and generates the numbers uh, according to how many bombs are by them. So let's program an array that represents this game. And we're just gonna, we're, the only thing we're gonna do is uh, represent the bombs. Uh, so this uh, field of play is actually, I guess we can make it easier on ourselves and just do a corner. Yeah, let's just do one, two, three, four by one, two, three, four. So let's try and replicate this game just by doing the top left uh, four cells. So first we need to choose how we would uh, represent that. So I'm going to represent that by saying uh, we have a minefield which has, uh, I'm going to put a asterisk uh, for a bomb and I'm going to put an empty string for anywhere that's empty. So what this one looks like is we have an asterisk, an asterisk, uh, an empty string, and we have another bomb over here in this corner and then nothing else. So let's see, that means that these are empty and there is a bomb here. And uh, this is a empty row. And let's just scoot all these things over so that they all look the same. Okay, so this is the input, uh, which is a minefield. And let's have a um, something that uh, that represents the output. Uh, 
uh, we're just going to have it print something out, uh, which in this case should be uh, star star one zero star star two. Oh, that's actually a three. And this would be a two, three, star, one. And this would be a zero, one, one, one. So uh, your job is to write a function that accepts a minefield. And it should iterate through the minefield and print out results like this. Uh, that just means that it's going to look at every cell and count how many bombs or how many mines uh, are next to that specific cell. Um, looks like this one, I was incorrect here, this should actually be a two because uh, it counts uh, diagonally as well as left right. So this one's a bomb, there's a bomb, this one is next to two bombs, this one is not touching anything, that's a bomb, that's a bomb, this one is next to three bombs in its top left, its left, and its bottom. Uh, this cell is next to just one bomb, and this cell is next to two bombs, and this cell is a bomb on the top left, the top, and the right. This one is a bomb. This one is only next to one bomb. Uh, bottom left corner over here is not touching any bomb. Uh, this one is a bomb on its top right. The next one has a bomb right above it. And this one has a bomb to its top left. So we get one, one, one there. So that is your challenge. Write a function called Minesweeper, which accepts a two-dimensional array. The two-dimensional array uh, either has a asterisk to represent a bomb or an empty string, and your job is to print out the following, uh, which shows the locations of the bombs, and it places a number in the cells according to how many bombs they're touching, uh, top left, left right, or diagonally on their corners.